Hayes Common, a wonderful open space, never been here before. And this is an almost annual tradition now, to try to pick up my route along the London Loop. Haven't been out on the London Loop since I think it was August last year. Um, and it's, <laughs> this is the pattern of things, which seems to be the pattern of things in my relationship with the London Loop, which I think I, well, the first section I walked, I think it was January 2018. And yeah, I tend to do two or three sections a year. Um, this is section three. I'm walking it in the reverse direction. I don't think there should be a direction, but I'm walking it counterclockwise. So in terms of the numbers, um, yeah. And I'm, I'm actually nearly at the end because I realized that on, I've walked the sections on the other side of the Thames, whatever numbers they would be, the, the final bits. So, um, yeah, section one will be my final section of the London Loop because, uh, yeah, like I say, I walked those other bits that are not very far away from me uh, out of order. I did them at various times. Uh, that's a really good part of the London Loop. Yeah, so I'm honing in on the conclusion and I do love, I love the London Loop. I've never had a walk on the London Loop which disappointed me, uh, not once. And it always, always, always delivers. And another thing that seems to be a pattern is that I often come out and do a section of the London Loop after I've been away somewhere. I seem to use it to reorientate myself after I've been away. And I came back from Berlin uh, a week ago. Yeah, a week ago, last Saturday. So this was uh, the perfect kind of um, reintroduction to London. Back on the London Loop, back on the London Loop. This is gonna be a great section. The previous section that I did, section four, I think was possibly the most picturesque and most beautiful. It went across the Addington Hills. And this section from West Wickham, or Hayes, I should say, Hayes in Kent to Pets Wood, promises to be another cracker as well. So we've got a great day ahead of us, great afternoon ahead of us in reality. Nine miles, I think, or 10 miles, something like that. Now we cross um, West Wickham Common, and the information board here tells us how uh, the City of London Corporation uh, acquired West Wickham Common in 1892 and it's protected from development by an Act of 1878, which I think is the um, Act that protected Epping Forest, although Epping Forest did have its own Act of Parliament, so you can kind of ignore that. But it's interesting to see these pockets of land which are owned and protected by the, uh, the City of London. This is a very interesting site here. This is the West Wickham Common Earthworks. And this actually last, uh, when, I, when I was last out on the London Loop, I kind of lost the light a little bit and I uh, didn't really have time to get up here and see it in the light. I was very excited about coming here. The information board says not a lot is known about it. Probably uh, Iron Age, certainly uh, this part, and they speculate that it's an unfinished Iron Age hill fort. And this would have been the entrance or the causeway into that part of the fort or the camp. This is part of the outer trench. And this is one of the banks here. You can see how steep it is. And you can see how high up we are here. That's a majestic view back across the valley there, isn't it? I think that is looking back towards where we came from on the previous section. We're getting on for what, you know, nine months ago, is it? Nine months ago, possibly longer. And here it is, the first London Loop sign. Until you see this first sign on the walk, you're always a little bit unsure whether you're in the right place. And uh, I've managed to stop myself walking in the wrong direction because I've come kind of this way to pick up the path and I've got to slightly double back on myself. And we're heading towards Keston now. So Transport for London provide these great kind of maps with descriptions of the route which I have been using pretty much all the way around. Um, the only thing is, is they go in one direction, so you have to kind of read it backwards, which can be a little bit complicated, but it's managed to serve me well so far. And I do have an ordnance survey map for the second half, 
But other than that, I'm going to be hopefully just following the signs. There's a little bit of jeopardy there. I do often get lost, which won't surprise you at all. Some of my most memorable walks of the last four years have been on the London Loop. Some absolute belters. I mean, the first section I'll never forget, which I did in the winter, and it was really, really muddy from Enfield to Cockfosters. It was cold as well, but that was an amazing walk. I mean, when I think about it, I can't think of a section <laughs> that I did that I didn't enjoy, as I've said, but I guess, and, and this, doing it now, memories of the last four years of walking the London Loop kind of come back in waves. I sort of particularly remember you know, going down uh, through Heathrow Airport, that was fantastic, that section there. And then I think I crossed the river at Kingston. It must have been in 2019, I think it was August 2019. I think that's correct. And so it feels like I've been south of the river for a long time. Well, yeah, like two and a half, nearly three years. Um, of course, each time you get further away from home, it takes longer to pick up the trail again. And now as I come towards the end, although actually, you know, it could take me. <laughs> I might, you know, the way, the pace I've been doing it, I might, not, I might not finish these three sections this year. I might not do another one till 2023. That'd be mad, wouldn't it? But the memories of those previous walks on the loop come to me. And there's a part of me that when I do finish it, I just want to go out and walk the whole thing just sort of like in one go without filming any of it or documenting it. We're now going across Ravensbourne Meadows. This has been a very, very leafy walk so far. Exactly what I needed. Just saw my first uh, London looper back there. I would just call them loopers maybe. Obviously walking in the opposite direction to me, but with his uh, London loop guidebook. I rarely see many people out walking the London Loop when you're doing it. I think the most I saw was on one of the southern sections near Surbiton, but yeah. And this is Keston Common. One of the things I love most about the London Loop is the way it highlights just how green London is. When you, walk, when you walk down the loop, you're walking through woodland, common land, beautiful parkland, even farmland at some points, as well as the obvious golf courses, of course, which always <laughs> completely mess me up and destroy my sense of direction. As shaky as that is, at the best of times, golf courses, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm completely done in with golf courses. There's more of those on the northern side than there are down in the south. But um, yeah, I mean, it just highlights just how lucky we are to live in such a verdant city. Get out on the London Loop if you haven't done so, so far. It's majestic. This stone seat here was erected in 1862 for, um, to, to celebrate, commemorate the work of William Wilberforce, the famous uh, anti-slavery campaigner. And this uh, down here, this oak tree is known as the Wilberforce Oak. I have to say the kind of Surrey and Kent sections have had the best views. I mean, we're in Greater London here, would you believe, in the London Borough of Bromley. And previously we were in the London Borough of Croydon. Incredible. Look at this review, incredible. The southern fringe of London, London's countryside. Being out here on the London Loop is a, is a good time to do a bit of kind of channel admin. <laughs> Something I never do with you, do I? Firstly, I just want to say hello and thank you to all the new subscribers. I mean, how many of us are there now? I'm not sure what the figure down there is. It depends on you watch this video, isn't it? But I think it's something like 58,000 subscribers. And I, I never thought this channel would have that many subscribers in my world of streams. So thank you so much. Um, 
But what I'm doing now, you'll notice like, uh, what, two, three weeks ago, I, I didn't upload a video. So what I'm gonna do this year is every six weeks, then take a week off. So I'll make six videos in a row, and then there won't be a video one week. And then carry on that way. That's the idea. Whether I'll stick to that schedule or not, that's, you know, that's roughly the idea. And I, for me, that makes the planning so much easier. To break it up into chunks of six, it, it means that I, I stay fresh as well. I keep fresh. And so it means every six weeks I get to kind of like recharge my batteries, have a think about the next block of videos. Uh, because I've been doing this sort of what I call the walking vlog series. Now in May, it'll be seven years, which is incredible. I started in May 2015, which is staggering really. I don't know how many videos there are now in the series. It's like 250 more, more than 250. So the plan this year is to make, I think 48 videos that works out. If I stick to that schedule, that'd be 48 videos in a year, which is, which is quite a lot of videos. <laughs> so if you want to know, you know, if you don't want to miss a video and you've subscribed, there's a, you can click subscribe and the next one's a little bell button. You can click that and you get a notification, but you don't have to do that. You can just come here every week and, and you know, find the new video and then if well, you come on a week when there isn't one, there's <laughs> about 250 others to kind of dip into. So uh, I hope you understand that. And like I say, I massively appreciate you watching these videos. Yeah, I, I love this and I've got no plans to stop. I nearly missed this little path here, which wouldn't have been great. So far, so good. In terms of getting lost and keeping on the path, fingers crossed for the rest of the way. Now we go along the quaintly named Farthing Street. Promises great things, doesn't it? One thing I will say about the southern sections of the London Loop is there are much more of a workout than the northern ones. I just climbed that hill there. A little bit out of breath, not, not enormously. There have been some great names on the London Loop, but Bogey Lane is definitely the winner. I don't, I don't think we're going to beat that, are we? Between here and Erith? And here is Bogey Lane. More glorious countryside here, looking towards sunlit uplands. of this field. This really is exactly what I needed today. It's really hit the spot so far. There's a really beautiful burst of sunshine just as I hit this field here. Absolutely glorious. Here we have the uh, inevitable and dreaded golf course. Let's see if I can navigate my way around it successfully without completely losing my sense of direction. I'm not sure if this is the right path or not, but it's certainly going in the right direction. And you can't argue that it's a really lovely little path, this, isn't it? This is ever so slightly ambiguous. It could be carry on along there, or it could be going that direction there, but that's a children's playground. You can see how I go astray now, can't you? And now through this wood, coming into my favorite time of the day, went out walking and passing from afternoon into early evening. It's just coming up for about six o'clock. St Giles Church here, just near Farnborough Village. Looks like a fine old Flint church, doesn't it? Farnborough seems like a Kind of quaint little village. Very pleasant indeed. I shan't be dwelling here, they'll be pushing on. I might try and find a can of soft drink actually, which would be one of my, my first of the year. So far, that paper map and the, the London Loop signs have served me well. No major incidents, and I think we've got only got a few miles to go now, maybe two or three miles to go. It's been a cracking day, and there's more ahead. You might be able to hear that bit of road noise behind me there. But coming come through the village, and I'm back now out onto this lovely bit of open land, I think that's the only kind of built-up area that I pass through on this section of the London Loop, which is amazing, isn't it? 
it's just like nine, I think it's 10 miles of open space, woodlands, fields, absolutely glorious. And luckily, look, just as I was about to go the wrong way, a London loop sign there to tell me that this is the correct direction to uh, the next bit, which is like a, a wood, a bit of woodland. Oh. These look like some brand new London loop signs here. Just uh, traversed quite a suburban area, down some alleyways, and now down another little path that leads through this housing estate and then into the final section of section three of the London loop. There's a lovely little brook here running behind these houses, but it has that distinct smell, that um, sort of sewagey smell that I I believe is grey water rather than natural sewage, but it's got quite an unhealthy aroma to it, that's for sure. Someone has sabotaged the London Loop sign. Luckily, I'm pretty sure we go this way through Crofton Woods. And here we go. Confirmation of my hunch. And by the looks of the ridges in this path here, I'm grateful to be doing this in dry weather. Looks like it would be a complete bog in winter. We emerge from the woods into this little housing estate here. And this is right near the end of the section now. We just go up through these houses and then we'll arrive at Pets Wood Station. And there ends our walk along the London Loop today. But we're not quite there yet. I'm sure there's a few twists and turns to this tale. That was quite a that was quite a schlep through that housing estate in the end. I think I slightly went a little bit rogue from the the route of the London Loop there at the end. It was a little bit more. I don't know what the purpose was. Anyway, I can just see Petswood Station up ahead, which marks the end of this section, section three. So there's just two more to go. Actually, one and a half really, because I covered quite a bit of section one on the recent walk. Uh, along Erith, Erith ran, say recent, last year sometime. Anyway, we'll do that, we will do that. We will finish it properly at the river, finish it where it begins, in the true spirit of me doing it <laughs> around the wrong way. No right or wrong way to do it, is it? And once again, the London Loop has well and truly delivered the goods. And what a cracking, cracking walk it's been. It's been a beautiful Sunday afternoon into the evening. Uh, thank you for coming along with me on another cracking walk. Uh, this season, because I'm breaking them up into seasons of six, and this season's been amazing, hasn't it? We've had the Caledonian Road, we've had Berlin, now the London Loop. What will be next? I know, but I'm going to keep it a surprise. I don't know the order in which the videos will come. So thank you so much for coming with me. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you in the next walk, wherever that may be. It'll be amazing wherever it is. It'll be incredible, transcendental. I'd rather set the bar quite high there, haven't I?